Hey, welcome back for challenge three of the Star Wars Creative Challenge. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this Rogue One Star Wars scenery. So first we're going to go over the supplies you'll need. You need some kind of big canvas or even a piece of paper. You'll need to print out the picture that I provided for you. You don't have to, but it's just easier if you have one to look at. If you can, I would also print one in black and white because I'm going to show you how to do a grid so we can keep our proportions in line. You will need four paint colors, red, yellow, black, and white. You also need a pencil, a fine tip white marker if you have one. You can also use white colored pencils or even find any kind of sharp pointed objects that you can draw with and you can just dip it into white paint. If you have an old toothbrush, this is gonna be fun for splattering on some of these dots in the galaxy. And I think that's it, I think we're ready to start. One way to make sure you get your proportions pretty close to what your photo is, is to do a grid. So on the picture, I just found the half mark, drew a line, and then half of that drew a line, half of that drew a line. Same thing on the vertical. I'm just gonna extend the sky in the foreground a little bit. So you can mark some of these dots on your canvas or you can draw the full grid. So I'll speed this up and you can see that. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this painting. First, we're going to do the background, which is essentially just the sky. Then we're gonna do the mountains. Very last, we're going to do the silhouette of the black trees. So we are just gonna mix up some paint right now. Cause you notice it's not pure black. It's mostly a really dark gray. So we've got really dark here, kind of dark here, and then it fades to light. So I'm gonna start with this on top. And you can just smudge this around. You can go back and forth however you want to apply it. But I like to keep it wet because we're going to be blending the lighter colors into it. You can work fast or you can have a spray bottle on hand and just keep kind of spritzing it so it doesn't dry out and that'll help it stay wet. Okay, now we're just going to dip right into that white. And you can mix it here if you want. I like to just take it right to the canvas and mix on here. And where they meet, just use a really light touch. Just go up and down, up and down, a little bit back and forth. It kind of fades out right on the center line and it's starting to get some warmth in it. You can kind of see this yellow and the orange just is kind of creeping up there. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and pause the video, get this far, and make sure you spray this to keep it wet, and then we'll keep on going all the way down. We'll get into these warm colors. Okay, let's continue down with our sky. I add a little more white, some yellow, and some red. So I'm going to dip right into the white and do, and my brush is still dirty from the gray. You don't have to rinse if you don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and come in here and try to get a little more white. All right, now I'm gonna dip into my yellow, again, with a dirty brush because it helps these colors blend. And having some of these funky colors that you make on your own, honestly, you really, really add to the painting. I used to resist doing this, but now I absolutely love it. Okay, now I'm gonna put my dirty brush down, dip right into the yellow, and get some true yellow first, and then I'll start fading up. Okay, now I'm gonna spray this so it stays wet. We've got some more blending to do. And again, with my dirty brush, I'm gonna dip into this red. So we're gonna mix our own orange. Probably right in here. I'm gonna have a lighter area. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little more red down here. I just wanna go slow. You can kinda of just play, go back and forth. If you like kind of this streaky look, I think it's kind of fun. You can keep that. If you really want to blend it out, you can do that too. I'll get some intense red down here so you can see that. Um, one other tip I'll give you, if you really want these blended out and you don't like this streakiness, you can use your fingers because our fingers don't leave. 
And then lastly, we are back to black hair at the bottom. So do your solid black first at the very, very bottom and then bring it up to start blending. Really light touch. And again, if you don't want the brush strokes, use your finger. One tip I'll let you know of is when you have a wet canvas and you're wanting it to hurry up and dry so you can move on to the next step, I will blow dry this to make it dry really fast. Okay, now we're going to paint in the mountains here and then we're going to go back over top of them to get some more of that color in there. While we're doing this, because we want to get that color back on top, I left my paints mixed up here. I left my, my brushes still dirty and sitting here. Depending on how long this takes you, um, you don't want these to dry out and get ruined. So again, I just spray, spray my paint, spray my brushes. I try to just leave them and work quickly. So I've mixed up a medium gray here that we're going to use for the mountains. It's lighter than the dark color we used up here in the sky. All right, so again, we have this light source right here, and I kind of made mine right here. So that's kind of a good um, starting place. This will be the mountain that's coming down here. Now you notice how imperfect these are. That's definitely what you want. We're going to go over this a couple times with some layers. So let's just get this super black. Okay, one last thing we'll do while we're still here in the black is go ahead and define a little bit of these trees here because they're going to be painted over with that red an orange kind of wash. So just the faintest little hint uh, that it's the trees. So easy way to do that is to make the center of the tree and then just kind of smudgy out, out, out. So that's about it. Just a few little smudgies that give you a hint of trees. And go ahead and blow dry this or at least wait until it's dry before we go on to the next step because we'll be doing the wash of color and we don't want it to blend in with the black. Okay, now we're gonna add a few of these highlights you see in the mountains in the back. So you want a clean brush and some new white. You dip in there and then you pounce off a lot of it. And it looks like all the highlights are coming from the left. Okay, so now we're finally ready to go back over and do our wash of sky. And then I'll go ahead and dip in these colors because that's kind of what I started with. So just slowly pull those colors that you need. We've got this kind of grayish warmth color here that is more yellow here, more orange here. So mix up a little bit of that and then we're just going to go down. It's hard to not just see the bright colors, but if we block those, you see a lot of the grayish warm colors. All right, let's start playing with these. Start in with my light color. See how crazy it is. Not too bad. Okay, so we're going to do a lot of blending. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this because I want a wet surface to work on. So you want to work pretty quickly going over these mountains because we want them to show through. So we want to keep it thin and transparent. And if you need to wipe it off later, you can. So as we blend up here into the gray, you can just get it wet with your finger if you want. Another thing you can do is get a paper towel and just kind of wipe and see how that looks. And blend some. And keep in mind, it's gonna look a little bit different when it dries. Super light touch will help it blend. Okay, now I'm gonna get that warmer color over here. I'm going to blend this a little bit with my fingers and kind of wipe a little bit off where the mountains are so you can see just so they have less paint than the background and then go back over them real lightly and see how it looks. So I think I'm going to dip my finger right into the red and just start touching on some of these really intense parts.
So I'm going to go back in and see if I can get this bright area. I'm going to put some white in the background because every time I had the white before it had a little bit of the gray mixed in with it so it was pretty dull. Okay, while that's drying, we'll go in and do some of these red highlights. So I'm still using my dirty brush that I did some of this with. I'm gonna get mine a little more red. I might even put a teeny dot of black in there to darken it. And then um, kind of like we did with the white, just kind of come in here and little shapes of bushes or rocks. I've got some funky orange on there too, that's kind of cool. And then just use a lighter and lighter touch where it's super light or you want to fade out. Then we're going to go up and do some of these little stars up in the galaxy. So I want to cover the area where this is. And so you'll want to find something that is round and it's going to about take up the size on your canvas that this takes up. I'm thinking a large paper plate is probably going to be perfect. I have a whole bunch of pre-cut shapes in my studio because I do this all the time. So I do like how it goes off the edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with mine. So essentially I'm just covering the area here so I don't get any splatters on it. So you just kind of dip your brush into your white paint and then do a little bit of practice so you see how much splatter you're getting and if you want to do close or if you want to do up far. Okay, so mine turned out pretty teeny, teeny, tiny. These ones are a little bigger. It's no big deal. If you want more of a splattered look, another thing you can do is flick it off your finger. I'm going to water down my paint a little bit. So you get some bigger like drips. So it just depends on what kind of look you want. So go have fun with that and make some stars in your galaxy. All right, go ahead and hit this with a blow dryer so it'll dry a little bit faster. And then while you're still waiting for some of the bigger chunks to dry, we can go ahead and do the edges. You can paint your edges any color, usually just one solid dark color. White or black is most common. So this one is easy because we've got so much dark. I'm just going to paint it black. Foam brush is perfect for this. Okay, now we are going to put our Death Star on here. So you put your template back in the same space you had it and trace around it with a pencil. And we really only need to go to about here because our trees are gonna come up here. Okay, and then we're gonna mix up a really light gray. So we've got some really stark contrast between these two. Paint in right along your line. Now as we get down here to the bottom, we want this to fade out and keep some of this sky in the back. So again, I'm gonna keep that wet and just kinda do this with my Fingers. Now you notice as, as it goes this way, it gets darker and darker until it fades into this color here. Keeping it wet. Okay, to get these shapes on our Death Star, we're going to use our template as a curved line for this one, and then we'll just paint them directly underneath. They're skinnier as it gets to the edge, and then they fade as we go to the left. And I'm thinking I might need a smaller brush. I like these angled brushes when you're needing to get into a point.
Okay, and if you want some of these details that are in here, little white, I don't know what they are, lights or something, um, we can add those with the end of our paintbrush by making some little dots and kind of lines and dragging it. But instead of making it white because it would be like stark white, because like this is white, we're going to make them a light gray. And then you just dip the end of your brush in there and kind of dot and drag and dot and drag. Okay, so as um, I went back and looked at this, this is really bugging me because it's supposed to just fade out nicely. So I'm going to mess with this a little bit. Okay, now we're going to paint on this little satellite thing here. If we were looking at it straight on, it would be a perfect circle, but because it's angled and it's at the side a little bit, it's actually more of an oval shape. So I'm starting with a dark gray because the edge is dark. So I'm going to do that first and then we can lighten it up. I'm going to get a lighter gray and go inside here and then I'm going to draw some really straight lines out like a spider web with a little circle in the middle. So I'm going to draw these lines in with just a pencil because it will kind of go to the silver look. These lines go straight across and I can just keep doing that with a ruler. So right now I'm going to do these two rings around the outside edge to add a little bit of detail. Alrighty, let's get these trees on and it will really start looking amazing. So what we're going to do first is just to draw the trunks of all the trees and I've got a really quick and easy way to get all of the branches on. I'm using straight black. Okay, so I'm going to go over this bottom part again because I want some of this red, but it's a little too much right now. I like that white. I never covered with the red, so it's sticking out a little too, too much. So I'm just going to go lightly over the red so you see a little bit. All right, here's my easy way to make pine trees. You want to start at the top and just dab with the very corner of your brush. Just kind of get some mess up there. And then go sideways, go a little bit to the left and then down a space, a little bit to the right. You're just using the corner until you have enough space to use the full brush. And what I found is if you go a little bit this way leave a space and then go to the other side it adds a little more interest and you want to leave space between each branch to let that light come through because that's where we're getting our cool uh, sunset kind of look and you go wider and wider as you get to the bottom all right lastly we're gonna draw on the little white TIE Fighters here. So we're not drawing the complete outline, it's just the hard, obvious lines. People that know Star Wars know exactly what these are. All you have to do is get the angles and then the little white circles in the middle. This one's a little bit bigger than that one. If you want, you can add some little dots with a different size of white paint pen. And lastly, you are the artist, so make sure that you sign it.